It's Brian Preston, the money guy. That's great. Uh, this next question, uh, Brian, is from Mike. Mike says, my, ju- my new job has an HSA plan. However, it's actually more expensive than their non-HSA plans. Is it better to save on the insurance premiums and invest that while foregoing the HSA aspect? Yeah, I always, if you have a, an employer-provided p- plan, obviously that's, requ- you know, HSAs require that you have to have a high-deductible health insurance plan. Um, in theory, by having a high-deductible plan, it should be cheaper. It should be less expensive. It should be less expensive because you are paying less in premiums monthly, and then hopefully you're taking some of those savings and then funding that savings account through the health savings, you know, the HSA, and you're getting a tax deduction. That's how the theory works. Now, I will tell you there's there's some unique things that happen when this is a part of your employer plan. These cafeteria plans, a lot of times I think that they're, the, these, these HSAs get put on there as bolt-ons because you've got a lot of legacy employees that are part of the PPO or the HMO where the employer is heavily subsidizing the the health insurance, meaning that you, the employee, is only paying a portion of what the true cost uh, of this coverage is. The employer is paying the lion's share. But probably enough employees went to the employer and said, hey, I've listened to this Money Guy show, <laughs> and they keep talking about how great HSAs are. Why don't we offer HSAs? And they're in the the the... I, th- I can see the 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 owner of the business or the HR department is like, oh, okay. I mean, I guess because these we have five I financial we'll mutants it. that are asking for it. We have eighty six people over here that are part of the legacy plan. We'll throw. We'll just ask our insurance provider if they can bolt on an HSA, and they'll do it. But they won't throw any money at it mm-hmm. because, like I said, their legacy insurance is the PPO or the HMO, and they're throwing just tons of money towards that. Employers don't have to get, let the dollars be the exact same between the plans. You would think per employee, it would be, I'm going to give you $500 a month towards your health insurance and you use it. It's not always that way. Sometimes there's inefficiencies where they'll highly subsidize the traditional insurance and then give less to the, the, the high deductible health insurance plan. You've got to go run the numbers. I mean, because I ran into that exact same situation when I worked in county government. Yep is that we kept high subsidies on the traditional insurance because that's where the lion's share of the employees and we didn't want to rock the boat, put a high deductible plan, but less money was going there. So it was less compelling of a reason. So I would tell you, definitely go run the numbers on, and it sounds like you've done that and it's still the traditional is better. Well, look, as much as I love high health savings accounts, um, I'm not. You're not. You're not a fool. You mm-hmm. you have to pay attention to the math of the situation, and if you can get more coverage for less money, that's pretty compelling. Yeah, I, th- I want to just when you say run the numbers, one of the things that I encourage everyone to do uh, every year at open enrollment is there's sort of these three different things that you have to look at. Uh, step number one is look at your difference in premium costs. So start a T column and put how much the premiums for either one of the two plans you're assessing are. Then number two, you have to kind of estimate what you think your expenses are going to be in a given year. Like how often do the kids go to the doctor? How often do you go to the doctor? What sort of medications are you on? That sort of thing. So you figure out how much will those things cost on this plan? How much will those things cost on this plan? And then if HSA is one of your considerations, you have to look at the tax savings for the HSA. Well, you take A plus B plus C, and you can kind of arrive at which one makes the most mathematical Mm -hmm. sense. You will be amazed to learn that at different ages and stages of life, it might change. Like in years that you're thinking about growing the family and having a baby or having a major procedure done, it might not make sense to the HSA. In other years, the HSA might come out ahead. So I think you ought to do that math every single year at open enrollment. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. The high deductible plan is great in years you don't have medical expenses. You are in those years that you're growing the family, you're going to probably want more of the traditional insurance experience. Take advantage of open enrollment periods. They do allow you to bob and weave between the different cafeteria options. Do the math though. Don't just, you know, just don't do it like what you did last year. Actually put the homework in, do because you will be rewarded financially by by just making sure you're proactive what with the benefits you get through your employer.